I'm Ben Andrews, uh, I'm a 34 year old Scallywag Athol and this is my spaceship. Um, it's called Terra Astronavis, which is a Latin term for the Earth spaceship or the Earth navigator. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to rectify that jump. There we go. Um, hang on. You, can, you can see how it comes together here. Yeah, here, here we go, I'll take that off for you. So you can have a bit of a look, and I'll even try and fix it while we're talking. Uh, maybe not. Um, okay, so um, yeah, the Earth Navigator, the Earth spaceship. Uh, this is maybe a, a crazy, technical, insane moment of my life. Um, it's about seven months in the process trying to figure out different dynamics. Um, and to be blatantly honest, it's more of a philosophical build than it is a technical build. And the technical elements of the construction were an absolutely lucid affair. Um, you know, those three in, the, uh, three in the morning moments where you achieve something so significant, but there's no one to gloat to. Yeah, it was one of those. It was just you and the parts. It, was, it totally was. It totally was. And, you know, there were moments where I'd wake up my sleeping partner, but get shut down really quickly. So, you know, um, it was worthwhile just holding on to that glory. Um, yeah, it's... So where did you start with this build then, and kind of what, as the idea came together? Um, uh, I, st I started with a massive, massive bag of these white shells um, that were from the uh, Sydney Opera House. Okay. Um, I predominantly bought that because I really loved all the dark tan, and I do a lot of landscapes as well, and, and wanted that, and then was left with this massive bag of shells that I had no idea what to do with. And so I, I built a couple of the external frame pieces, um, and we're thinking spaceship, other things, whatever. And then I started making a belt um, and developed like a hinge technique for the back that worked really well off axles and, and pins and technic uh, lift arms. And all of a sudden it started coming together. I made a really small one that was maybe a 32 base plate in diameter um, and it was just too tight. And then I started thinking obviously Lego is really, really mathematically profound. Um, so I, uh, I made 16 elements of each, the internal pieces, the external pieces. And then I borrowed some train track off a friend of mine um, to sort of see what the radius actually looked like, if it was smooth enough. And I got a narrow gauge, or I got a larger gauge first, that didn't work too well. Got the narrow gauge, dropped it in, and it was basically five, maybe six and a half studs perfectly wide on each side. And it said to me that everything was gonna play out. And from there, you know, train tracks almost uh, begged to be mechanized. So I was like, okay, okay, let's do that now. Okay. And then did that um, as a dummy run, basically about an inch off the table. And then built this really obscure, almost like three dimensionally uh, constructed T frame for everything to sit on. Um, and me being a, a very rigorous eight year old. I, um, I stood on it, it held my weight, so I figured it's probably gonna pull three and a half kilos of Lego, win. Um, I, I think part of the, part of the process um, uh, for me in this, uh, though I, I, knew, I knew it could be done, but it was, it was one of those challenges that seemed to elude me for about four months straight. I tried so many different techniques, and um, I gotta say, uh, having amazing people that are um, driven by different building styles um, within your own community that you can refer to and have conversations about is really vital. I've got um, uh, three really, really amazing uh, technical friends, um, uh, Dylan Jeppo, um, or we just call him Jeppo, Luke Masters and Kieran Chamberlain, who Jeppo is a, a technical whiz, makes amazing spirographs and all kinds of stuff. Um, Luke Masters is an amazing product designer and if he's not working for Lego or at least doing his own amazing designs and selling them at mass in the next three or four years uh, I will be very surprised um, and Kieran makes incredibly lifelike and almost rideable Lego motorcycles at mass scale um, really really phenomenal and um, and so I, I you know I'd go through these stages as I'm sure everyone can relate to where you're just kind of beaten 
and you're just like, man, I can't go any further with this. And so I'd hit these guys up and be like, look, I can't figure it out. What's the gearing ratio? What's this? And they basically said, man, I'm not telling you. But what I will say is it can be done. We've done it in five or six different ways uh, in this uh, technique, this style, blah, blah, blah. It can be done. Keep persevering, keep persevering. Don't stop, don't stop. And then finally I got it. And they were the first people to give me a round of applause. Uh, and they'll be the first people to crack a tear when I finally dissemble it, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so having really good crew kind of spurred on a lot of it because there were times where I just thought it's just going to stay static. Um, and I'm really glad that I did persevere. Does Absolutely. it tend to run smoothly kind of the whole day or oh, how does that yeah. work? Um, yeah, it runs really, really smoothly. Runs even better if you use a little bit of silicon lubricant to keep it going. Um, though I'm really slack on that front. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that um, the pressure is really evenly distributed, um, which is uh, strangely satisfying. Um, once, like, there was a, a time really early on where it wasn't, and I was trying to go for something that stuck out the side on one area, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep, uh, like, all the greebling and stuff, I want it to be different, um, but I'm going to keep the, the same kind of static repetition throughout it so everything else that isn't symmetrical really pops. Uh, and once I did that, everything leveled out. The weight ratio held itself beautifully. Um, uh, there was one beta run that I did where instead of having the tiles uh, on the top of the supports that hold the top base on, um, I just had a couple of exposed studs. So the whole thing kind of snapped in place. The issue being, and I'm sure a lot of people will understand this really well, is that if you have mechanisms that you can't get into to fix at late notice or someone bumps the table at an exhibition or whatever, um, it starts juddering and throws itself around. So I changed the, changed the feet that the supports sit on. Um, and then once it was all tiled and smooth, I put a base plate on the underside of the top. No issues. Yeah. No issues. For the top section yeah, yeah. here, what do we have going on there? Right, I'll, I'll put it back on okay. for you. Um, <laughs> Try to get everything straightened uh, out. <laughs> whatever. I'll, I'll figure that out in the works. Uh, right. Um, okay, so the whole idea for me, uh, I, I said earlier, it's a bit of a philosophical build. The whole idea is that, like, hypothetically, of course, like, um, in a lot of sci-fi realms and, and, and whatnot, we have this concept of a spaceship, right? And, you know, you ask someone what a spaceship looks like and everyone looks at you like a dog who's been shown a card trick and they don't know how to explain it, and great. With, with a spaceship, you have a very specific crew, like any form of ship or plane or, or whatever. Um, you need a captain to listen to, you need supports, you need crewmates, engineers, all these different things. And they get on really, really well because if something gives, then all of a sudden the whole thing doesn't operate, right? And so with this, the, the concept is that if we as society is, no, it's not bigger than society, as a species, we're living on a, a spaceship um, and landmass and citadels and all this kind of thing, then we would have to get on really well with each other. We'd have to be more of a harmonious society. We'd have to um, be more engaging with each other to understand what's, what's uh, more important, an individual ego or, um, or the collective consciousness. Um, and yet, here we are, on our planet in some pretty uh, surreal, tumultuous times all over the world and we can't seem to get on well because one person looks like a pirate or uh, another person wants to wear a dress but they don't have the right uh, uh, appendages to match that or whatever it may be. And so I, I kind of want to say to a whole lot of people that they're, they're a bigger fish to fry. We're, we are on a gigantic rock sphere ripping around space around the sun at however many thousands of kilometers an hour and we can just get on well if we put a little bit more effort in um, which is why like the the title being terra astronavis the earth spaceship or the earth space navigator um, kind of is a double-edged sword because not only are, are you navigating space but you're navigating the spaces between people on the mass itself and um, i really wanted to be able to share that kind of sentimentality with 
all the people. So, yeah. yeah. So you really have kind of a solid message or idea behind yeah. the build here. Is that something you try to achieve in a lot of your builds and kind of your approach to Lego building in general? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Like, I, I, love, I love all styles of building. I, I don't restrict myself to uh, just landscapes, so I love landscapes or classical modulars or whatever it may be. Um, and I find that a lot of my different builds uh, typically incorporate at least an element of either my own sentimentality um, to do with a concept that I really love or wh whatnot, um, but also um, something that is uh, deeper, something that's maybe we need a little bit more metacognition about, that we can sit down and individually have a deeper conversation about and then share that conversation to start moving things forward. Um, and yeah, like you said, man, all of my builds basically, um, apart from uh, the I'm about to pass out. I can't play with Lego anymore. Three piece builds. Um, yeah, all of them have something. Have something to say. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for bringing it to the show. It's a fantastic build here, and I appreciate you chatting with me about oh, it. Thank pleasure. you. Thanks for coming out, man. Absolutely. Thank you.